I have my trusty digital domain mug in hand. I'm ready for this. Tonight we're going to be doing caps. That's what's happening. Caps. Does anyone use it? No. No one uses it. Why not? Well, we're going to find out. Actually, we're going to find out why not. That not. That you should. <laughs> because caps is actually pretty good. I was playing with it last night and it got a bit late, so I decided to do a little video today. And um, that's what we're going to do. So let's let's do it. I've loaded up some sand. Mmm, coffee, good. I've loaded up some sounds. Just um, just nothing uh, too fancy. Um, that guitar reverb, some um, of Hans's violins. Um, I've not got that many um, channels going now. A piano, um, some drums, which are M1 drums, which, um, not, again, nothing fancy. Again, some other strings, and then and uh, and a. Just a little, I call it the Moog lead, but it's actually the waveform that's just a combination of sawtooth square wave and sine wave that you get in the sample page. I kind of like the sound of that. Anyway, okay, so that's what we've got right now. Nothing fancy. So let's just go ahead and go straight to caps, which is Escape F11. Boom, we're in. Right, um, now the first thing you need to do is just go N and I'll call it uh, cap, cap C3. That's what's happening. And, um, and so it's just N, it's the same as RS, just N for new, L for load, the same kind of things. Boom. So far, so good. One thing, now I will be referring to this every so often, like all the time, because I'm still getting used to it. And um, uh, it's interesting because a lot, uh, this is a lot more, there's a lot more on, like you need to know these, this list of these, these um, little micro pages, but you get used to them, um, kind of, right? So, um, for instance, last night, I couldn't figure out where the tempo one was. So when I was just about to do something, I basically had to just put, mark a tempo, which I could do right there, um, for the whole thing. And we'll, we'll talk about how you mark things, how you clear things, how you can define and move notes. And you'll find it's super simple. It's bananas how good this is. And I really realized that a lot of the time what I was doing is I was doing kind of RS stuff. Um, and then synchronizing it with logic, and then kind of doing stuff from there. And what I'm finding now, excuse me, and what I'm finding now is that um, I realize I can actually do complete jobs without having um, logic synchronized this at all, quite like quite comfortably. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, but we'll see. All right, so first of all, let's just um, show you kind of like how you go around. So when you're wanting to wander around, you basically just use the shift key and you move around and you can see on the screen there that it moves around, which is cool. If you want to say, well, I'm gonna work on a certain area of um, certain um, selection, you just press shift home and then you go to where the end is like that and that's, that's the defining range that you're gonna be working in, right? So what you can do normally is just hold down shift and then you see there's an F15 and it just starts playing that loop there. Now let me just pop the click on. And that's a bit fast for me. So I could either go and find where I want the tempo to be. Um, oh, by the way, shift clear, clears it out. Another thing is when you're inside the sequencer, which is more a bit more like RS, you can go back and forward between notes and I can see here, out here, this just goes back and forth between measures. Fairly simple. And then um, inside, inside it goes back and forth through the notes, just tick through the notes. And then when you go shift backwards and forward, so it's not gonna do anything here. Oh, it is. It does, what it does is it goes through, if I go to my escape M for measures, you will see that when I do that, it goes through whatever the quantization is. So if I'm just gonna pop the quantization down to that, that's quarter notes you'll see here, boom. So there's just one division in between each one, right? Fine, which is I think is, if that's, that's sixteenths, I guess. Is it, or is it eighths? Doesn't matter for now. Anyway, um, and then what you can also do if you put that on there, that will just basically do the quantization. It won't quantize the notes, it'll just quantize what you hear coming out of it, which is super, super handy. 
Alrighty, so let's just go back to Escape O, which is back to the main page. And I'm gonna just maybe do this home and I'm gonna come down to say here and I'm gonna say 80 and then psh, hit F3, boom. And so that's told it to be 80 beats a minute, I think. Let's have a listen to that. And that might be uh, too slow. Let's have a little listen. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So again, you've got your normal start, stop, and, 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 and keys here. One thing that's kind of handy, um, you can, you can um, do step recording if you want. And then also, what was the other thing I found the other day? I'll kind of, I'll probably hit across some, some things that are kind of normal. But let's just say I'm going to record a four bar, uh, four measure uh, thing. I'm just going to say I'm going to go home, one, two, three, four, boom. And that's going to define what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, right? Oh yeah, it's the same thing. You can drop in and out when you're playing, which is what I'm going to do here. Um, boom. Um, hopefully I'll do something. You can hear some of my notes are a bit messy there, as I'm not the best player. Excuse me, this is very important. Mm. Ah, you know how many cups of these there are? There are only so many. It's a very famous cup. All right, so um, um, my notes are a bit messy there. So let's go in into the measure editor, and this is where things get quite, quite fun. So if I just go clear so I can see this a little bit easier, if I go through here... Oh! Like for instance there, you can see all of my notes there are... It's actually at the... That, that is my first measure. I messed up with my timing. So I can go like this. Now, this isn't a very clear example, but I, I, I can do it right here. If I go here, it just goes through the notes. So if I go to that first group there, I can then go shift home, then go through the notes, right? And then shift home. And it selected those notes. And I can move them. So if I go to a new place, if I say I want them all to be exactly here, I can press bam and it would shift them along here. Super, super simple. Barely an inconvenience. So um, that kind of stuff is super handy. Let me just clear that. In this particular situation, they're all at the end here. And if I go back to measure uh, three, two, one, you'll see there's nothing there. That's actually a hangover from the, 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 that's probably one of the first notes and I need to go grab it. So let's just say I'm gonna do a little bit of tidying up. The quantization is kind of ha helping with some of these. I could, I could probably move them into the right area, but let's just go to this particular example of messiness. Let's say I just want those notes, instead of being at the end of the fourth measure, to be right at the beginning of the first measure. Uh, so if I click through the there's the first note. So I sh shift home, and I go, that's them all. So I know I've got them all, and I go shift home, and then I go to measure one, and then I just come over here, dun, 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 back to the beginning. I'm at measure one, measure four, right? And then I go move merge and I go F8, boom. And it just brings them there. Easy peasy. It's, it's that's very simple. And now when you play it, it's like for instance, let's just look at that. Those if I go to that third measure there, and I come back here, um, you'll see those notes are a little bit late. So I can just go. Just, I can just pick up that note and paste it on the first note. Pick up those notes and paste them on that. Pick up that note, go back, paste. Now I've got them quantized like that, so we'll play again. So 
So same thing, if I go back to that one there and notice that those are a tad early, right? So if I go back here, so I'm just going to go shift home, go to the last note, shift home, then I just go control shift to take me to that exact beginning of the measure three and just go um, uh, move merge F8, boom, bunk and a shift clear. You see they're all nicely aligned there, look at that! Piece of cake! Boom! Now again, um, I will switch on uh, on this piano here, I'll just come down from the top and I'll put my quantization down there to four, uh, I mean I'm playing, I'm not, I'm not really playing anything that's really 16th, but we can hear because when you do this and you play it, you can actually, you can hear it. Right. So that's eighths, right? So if I go up here and I put this to that next one up of the sixteenths. It takes a little while for it to kick in uh, sometimes, but you can hear, so that's sixteenths. I now know that that's sixteenths. I now know that. Yeah, should know that, shouldn't I? Being as old as I am, one would assume that I had some knowledge. Don't assume. It makes an assume out of me. Right, so let's go back to the main thing. And uh, let's say we're just going to record. Now, it remembers the last, last part, right? It remembers um, the last time that you're looping. So I don't really need to do anything. And if I was going to say, um, if I was going to now just go to the piano, uh, the, say this guitar reverb thing okay and um, uh, it would just do the same loop so all I need to do is press play So now I've just punched in there. I had a stray note in there, so let's go and fix that. Escape M from measure, and I think it was on the third measure. Um, There it is there at the end. So, again, I just... There it is. I recognize it even. Then you just go uh, Control and Erase. Boom. Oops, I mean F8. Erase. And it's gone. Darn it. <laughs> I erased the whole thing. I should have just... I should have selected it first. That's what I should have done. But that's fine. It wasn't very good anyway. <laughs> I supposed to select it first, so... So, let me just quickly, to make it easier for myself, let's just go back to the first measure and I'll select that and now I can go Control F8 and it will delete everything. Boom. Go to the next measure, it's all done. So shift clear, back to Opus. Makes it sound a bit grand, I think. Opus is a bit much, if you ask me. So let's just... Um, boom, punch in. So far, so good. Uh, and again, I can just go and go into the um, strings, I guess. F8, 
fine. There you go. And um, so you get the idea. So the next thing we could do is, if I just go on the drums now, all right? Um, now, this is one thing that's interesting. I'm now realizing that the way that this works, if you go to the, I know what I'm doing, uh, <laughs> the drum editor, you know, it's cunning, escape D. I would never figure that one out. Anyway, it only shows the first eight notes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you really want to take advantage of this, it kind of puts a page R type look on things here, but it's only the first eight notes. Why didn't they do it for other notes? Can't they go up and down? No, you can't, but you can... So anyway, you can just go to the measure tool if you want to do that. It's just not as clearly kind of laid out, right? Anyway, it's okay. So let's just say we're going to be... Um, but what it does do is this exploded view. So let's um, say I'm going to try and use stuff that's in the first eight notes so you can see. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's good. I'm doing it for explanation. Okay, right. So let's just, let's say we're gonna do this. Now, what I might just do is just do the first two measures so that I don't have to play all that stuff. And then I can show how easy it is to copy. So I go home, boom, boom, and then I go shift. I'll, I'll get to the mixing li later, it's just a bit loud. So, um, one thing I do notice that um, it was mentioned on the group that this is running off the waveform supervisor. I notice it's just so much snappier. One thing I always noticed is if you look at videos of people with the, the 2X, the Fairlight Cement, Cement 2X, it, is, it, it looks faster. And I think that this has got more processing power, but maybe it's a bit imbalanced. There's a 68040 sitting in there, but the main one isn't, you, when you're using the interface, I believe it's not using that. That's done for waveform stuff. FFT stuff, I'm, I, might, I might be wrong. I don't know. Anyhow, um, this just seems a whole lot nippier. Redraw on the screen looks nippier. It doesn't look like it draws down. It seems a lot more snappy. Anyway, just side note. So now what I've done is I've just told it to rep repeat those bits there. So now that I can go into my drum thing, and I'll just go clear, just so it's a bit nicer to look at. And uh, well, let's uh, put this on to uh, quantization on. And again, I'm just just messing around. Again, I can toggle back and forth between recording and playing super, super easy. So if I wanted to, to do something, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's just do some shakers in there, right? And I can just dip, I can listen. And then if I like it, I just dip in and start recording. Done too many. Again, I'm doing it for explanation. I know musically it's a bit crap, but it doesn't matter. Boom. So now we go back to screen. So you can see why if I go to D, it's super easy just to see all the exploded notes out. But if I did happen to have other <laughs> notes higher up, I just go to M and I can see them there. It's really very fine. It's totally fine. You just don't get the notes there and that's okay. No problem. And let's go back to this one here and um, um, 
Right, let's just go to another set, another, um, another um, block of four, as it were, just for example's sake. So let's just go up to piano. Okay, and now I'm going to go to measure five and go home, one, two, three, four, boom, and then go shift, bum. And it's now going to loop that area, which is, again, very, very simple. Um, when you hold down this, you can see down this side here, I believe this is for all your different pages, because this was really meant as a MIDI controller uh, scenario, where you could, you know, um, record um, or sequence lots of other MIDI gear connected to it, hence there's a whole bunch of MIDI connections on the back of it. Um, I now really want to hook up a bunch of MIDI gear, but sadly, I'm in Nairobi, and I don't have the ability so easily to go just go and buy a whole bunch of gear off eBay and uh, easily have it delivered to my door. That last part is the tricky part. Okay, so... So, um, one thing that I didn't talk about is how cool this little thing up here is. Instead of having it in RS where it's on the side, you don't need your velocity and you, you don't your notes. If I wanted to change a note, let's say we're going to go into like measure 5 there. And I'm going to go into my, my editor here. Let's say I wanted to change that first note. Oops. So let's just go back here to 1. 1, 2, what was that note? I just saw one there. Measure 5. So let's just come back, let's come back to say, now you see the way it shows it there? If I wanted to change that, I would just, I could, oh yeah, you have, you click on the note, and then you say, and see, move to there, it's easy peasy. So I go through the, that, dun, dun. say if I wanted it here. But I don't. I want to change it back. And it changes there. So, and I say, well, the velocity is a bit high there. Let's just put that to there. Boom. Because I've got no sustain pedal here. So I'm a bit blonky blonky. All right. Anyway. Super, super simple. Um, so let's just have a look. Let's go back to the main page here. And I could probably just take the same drums part that I did back here. Right. And um, one thing I do need to make, see it says time 251, I'm not at the beginning of the measure. So if I go back to measure here, and I put it back to the beginning, holding a shift and then bracket, I'm not at the beginning, time, zero, I'm good, right? So now when I go back to the opus view, if I go down to my drums, for instance, and I just take, oops, I highlight that, paste that, uh, a highlight, look, I've ended the highlight, right? And now if I go to um, here, right? I can do this uh, copy merge. There's a couple of different ways I can do this. I can basically, if I go paste, that lightning strike means that it'll just erase anything that's there, but there's nothing there on the drums anyway. Um, copy, not sure about that. And move, I guess, is a destructive move. But all I'm gonna do now is do a copy merge, which takes those two and paste them there. So I'll do that, and I'll do that with seven. Bonk. And it does its thing. And then I guess really, to make sure I've done it right, I'll go to, um, yeah, I know there's a simpler way of doing this, um, because I did it the other night, but it was one of those ones that I don't remember exactly. But it's not, it's not really a big problem. So let's just go copy merge seven. Boom. So now if I listen to this, I know it's still looped around on that. Now I should have drums. So let's just now, I'm going to go back, um, oops, going to go back to the beginning. Oh, again. And hit that and then go. Now again, you've got, this might not, 
instead of having a timeline view, like a, I like Gantt charts and I like calendars. No, I like Gantt charts and I like timelines because I think like an editor, I think like, like the way logic is, and I like time going in like that, like that. I'm not a big fan of calendars because it kind of, Saturday looks close to Saturday. It's like, it's right beside it. I don't get the relationship. But in this particular one, it's not that bad because it's blocks of eight, which is, you know, two measures, uh, four measures, four measures. It's kind of, it might not be that bad unless you have some kind of interesting beginning to, to something. I don't know. I think that isn't as bad and I will find out in due course. So now if I go, boom, it's now going to play that and I can put those strings back on. I guess I'll now need to make new strings. I switched off. Let me just lower the volume of that other one. there. Let's go back to the beginning. Hear that? Guess what I need to do? Go down to my drums track. And this is my one little gripe. You can't see if something's been filled in. So I wish you'd put little lines there. There's, there's enough for eight pixels or stuff, I don't know, to show that you've put stuff in there. It always looks empty. So now I have to do a copy merge there because I forgot to do it, but you, you do have to have that kind of in your head. And that's where obviously a more modern sequencer like Logic um, or New End or whoever, you know, obviously has a lot more screen real estate and a different way of showing it. But um, what it does do is the, you can show it in the activity mode, activity view, which is escape A. Ta-da! Again, it only shows it on the measure. So if I go back to measure one, you can see everything. So that's that's okay. Um, what's hit point display? I never even tried that. I thought it was something to do with assassins. Um, timeline display. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, I, I guess if you put comments on there. I don't know. I don't know. Let's uh, just go to. Um, oh, let me show you something that's quite cool. If I wanted to do like, uh, let's go back to um, Opus, okay. And let's just say I'm going to do a little, a little bit with the, with the Moog sound, okay? As you can probably see, I've got my, uh, I've got my uh, pitch and my expression here, and I've got my attack and my release, just mapped out in my MIDI thing jig and packs right in, uh, which I'm sure everyone knows how to do. So. Right, now, let's just go on to that. So let's go to option P. And you'll see that there's, um, there's um, some gaps there. What this allows you to do is to switch on, um, um, to switch on um, what controllers you want to record. Let me just go up um, here, down to Moog. It's a bit slow, that, isn't it? Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to switch off quantization, right? So how what you do up here is you type in a uh, question mark. Oh no, you don't. You don't. You come down to here, I guess, and you come across. That's what you do. So now you're going to tell it of what controllers you want. So if you type in, for instance, PB, and go set it puts in pitch bend, right? Let's go a uh, question mark, set, and it's, it's waiting for a controller now. And I just move my, boop, 
with my little wheel there, bam, and it tangles it all one. You know? I could, even if I wanted to, change, record these too. If I wanted to change my, my attack and, and release times, it'll, it'll take in. So let's just say I'm going to do that. Let's just do another question. Oops. Let's do a question mark. Another set. I'm just going to move this a little bit. Tweak. O2. Look at that. Fantastic. Let's go mental. Let's just do another one. Set. Another question mark. Release. Boom. I've got one, two, and three. It just so happens it's one, two, and three. I mean, it could be anything. I could go on a different page and let's just say I'm going to do another one. Boom. And I'll just do, move that one. I've got eight, which is over there. No biggie. Um, when they're highlighted, that means they're recording. When they're not highlighted, they're not recording. Alrighty. So let's just say um, I go back to Opus. Um, now, the other night, I felt like I had to press arm for it to record those. But I think I was just messing up. So now I'm just going to do it without that and see what it's like. So let's see if I can find something to play here. Okay, so let's just say we're going to do that. Okay, ready? Here we go. Um, and let's just, hopefully it's going to be recording. Let's go back to the one. I want to put my... How do I put that back there? Is it notes? Yes, I've got my little keyboard there. All right, let's figure out what we're going to do. Who did that? Um, let's just um, go back and just... I hadn't really thought it was going to do, though. So now that it's on Moog here, it's now just going to erase... Oops. Control uh, uh, F8. It's now just going to erase these notes, so I'm fine. Um, let's try again. Again, I've not quantized my stuff, so I know I've got to fix that. Um, we can do that in a minute. So let's just say I'll record. Here we go. All right, let's see if it played that. Again, I did it a bit heavy-handed just so we could hear it. Um, let's just go and fix those pia pia pianos for a second. There's shortcuts to get to each of these, and I'm not doing them. But figure it out. So let's we're on measure five, and it's actually the. It, I think it's on eight. I can get my measure five stuff. It's right at the end. There it is. You naughty little tinkers. I see you. So I'm going to quickly just jump across there to those next notes, and I'll home, boom, home. Now I go back to measure five. I'm at the beginning of measure five, I'm going to go copy merge, boom, and there they are. Now I can go back to opus. And then when I play, um, I'll just play it from... I'll play it, just play it. Okay, here we go, clear. It doesn't take a genius to realize those two things don't go very well together. <laughs> but it's fine, it's just an example. All right, 
that's that's I'm fine it's kind of easy peasy if I was wanting now to say well I'm going to repeat that whole thing I would go over to measure 8 bam right let's say I wanted to copy that um oops no um I was want to copy all of those tracks there is a way to make me copy all of them but I might not want to do that and so now from here the only thing I would make sure is that if I'm um, in measure one, two, one, I just make sure I'm at the beginning before you copy. So you go back to Opus there, and let's say I'm going to go down and copy the whole thing. I would kind of go up and down like this, right? And I'd go uh, copy merge, seven, boom. And I'd wait for it to finish. And I'd come down and down to piano. Copy merge. Um, I guess you can do it for all parts. Wow, it's taking its time to do that. And then copy merge again. Boom. So now what we've got, if we if we were gonna do this, um, I was really thinking about that, it's amazing. Okay, and then copy that. Now, as you can imagine, if you had, uh, I'm doing this wrong, because if you're using it the way it's supposed to be used, um, you'd be using it. There's a lot of keyboard commands in this thing that some of them are really, they have syntax, I get it, but and I, I guess you'd get into it after a while, but um, it's a little bit arcane. So I'm sure there is one that, that's for copying all things at once and that's that would make sense and from looking at everything else that's in this it feels like that that's a kind of natural conclusion that it would have that so let's just say uh let's clear that now it's done that and let's just go up to the top and let's say i'm gonna go from measure uh seven boom and uh and I, i'm going down to say measure 11 now boom right now you'll be able to hear it that it's actually copied everything across and is going forward from there You go see so that it did do that copied everything across um yeah it would be really good so what you can do there's a kind of thing to kind of keep track of things you can kind of say you know um say verse one it's not a verse i'm not even doing it. there's a thing here you can just uh, um nope that's the wrong one where is it there um you can mark it with shift f3 it puts a little note in there so you can say well then after there i did another one as a v2 you can't you can't put them in the same thing because they're used to actually locate. So you can say play from verse 1 to verse 2. You can just go PL V1 to V2 and it'll do both of those, for instance. So it's, it's I don't know, I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but I just wish there was a way of marking things. There's this thing here, uh, which is, a, I guess, a time signature, which if you don't do anything with the time signature, perhaps you can use it as a, as a marker, like I've done things in here. <laughs> that's again, that's great for really short ones, but um, um, that wouldn't be very smart in the long way, would it? I didn't say I was smart. I'm just, uh, I I'm like a dog with a bone, I won't give up. Because I tried this before and it felt, uh, I, I, I bounced off it because it seemed like slightly difficult, but then I came back to it. And I'm glad I have because I really feel like there's a lot of other things I didn't really get to on this that you can really, that you know, you get, you get used to when you're moving around. And I realized even just last night, it's very, very simple just to, um, to keep on going. Um, it would be good if things were a bit more visual. And maybe I've missed something and maybe somebody on the group knows about this. Know what I'm saying? There might be a, a, something I'm totally missing out upon this, but I know that just from looking at this this uh, manual and the one that's in the tutorial, yeah, there's a totally a lot that I'm not that I'm not um, getting to. But I think that the, the simple things I find when you're on um, when you're on um, something, just it's super easy to go through the notes like that, right? And then go through the quantization like that, you know, and then switching on your quantizer. All of that's super simple. 
Um, oh look, it does tell you the beats per minute up there. Um, yeah, I find all of it is is nice and easy. If I if I go back to um, measure one, if I go back to Opus, and I say I just want to play from measure one, and I mark like that, and I go to measure four, and then I press fifteen, and I stop that, and I go back to activity, so I can see if everything's there. And I go clear, and then I press play. It's simple. All right, I think that about covers it. Um, if there's anything else, and also if I've forgotten anything, if I've missed anything, I bet you I've missed some really super important stuff. Yeah, I probably have. But um, the manual is only this big, and a lot of it has lots of complicated things in there. Copy merge, move mirror, part copy. Yeah, see, here's the exact page that I need to actually learn if I'm wanting to copy stuff from um, a bunch of different parts and I just want to block copy. That's exactly the part I should do. I should maybe read the book before doing this, but I thought I'd delve in and show you guys and girls. Uh, hopefully this has been fun, um, or at least um, gives a little delve into caps and um, how cool it is. All right. I'll do another one of these shortly. Um, cheers.